we're going to talk about two different types of installations today, a trench installation and a downhole auger installation. Um, they both have advantages and disadvantages and you should pick which one you need depending on uh, what your research goals are. Uh, I'm going to start with a trench installation where we're basically just going to dig a pit and install sensors in the sidewall. So we've dug down to about 12 inches. We're going to install this at about 6 inches, just, be just beneath the root zone. We've got a little uh, tool to take a bulk density sample here, so we're going to do that while we're down here. And then with this particular thing, we've got our vial here. and we'll take this back to the lab for bulk density analysis. Now we've got an EC5 sensor that we're just going to install down hole or in the, in the sidewall. And we want to push it straight in. Preferably without wiggling it. So you want to get the sensor installed as far as you can, uh, ideally up to the completely up to the cable. Okay, we also have a GS3 sensor, and I'm going to put it several inches away. Keep in mind that these sensors have a volume of influence, so you don't want to put them too close to each other. We're going to use our ProCheck now to test the sensor. Uh, right now I'm testing the EC5 to make sure it's giving a reasonable value and that it's fully functioning before we fill in the hole. Now I'm going to test the GS3. And the GS3 is looking good as well. So now we're ready to fill in our hole. And then we can carefully pack it back once we get it some, some, some support on it. Okay. Before we backfill this hole, we're going to show the downhole auger installation. And so the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is auger a hole. So we've got our homemade installation tool right now. It's a three quarter inch pipe. You could use PVC. This is a stainless steel because we were doing a lot. Uh, this just slides into this notch just like this. It sits on the end. We've threaded the cable through this. So we have our installation, our augered hole here. I didn't make it very deep, but you could make it again up to five feet. And you're just gonna push this down into the bottom of the hole. It's really important that you have this installed into undisturbed soil, which is why we're pushing it into the bottom of the hole. Okay, this is when it's really important to use your ProCheck to take a reading because you can't see what the installation looks like. So. We're gonna plug this in and take a look at the reading. Make sure it's reasonable. If it's slightly negative or doesn't look like it should be, you need to just pull the sensor out and try in another location. The sensor looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and remove our installation tool and backfill the hole. Do this one layer at a time, and you're gonna backfill to the approximate bulk density of the surrounding soil. We we're not going to measure this per se, it's just really going by feel. So doing it by layers, tapping as you're going along to try to get that bulk density to match the surrounding soil so that you're not having any preferential flow patterns. Okay. Now we're going to backfill our, our hole. And just like with the down hole installation, you're going to want to fill a little bit and then pack it back. I like to have the cables going directly from the sensor to where they're going to exit the hole. If a sensor failure happens and you do need to excavate and, re and replace a sensor, the easiest way to find your sensor with minimum disturbance is going to be by finding the cable first and following the cable. So I like, it. I like to make it very easy to find which cable goes to which sensor once you're in the soil. 
Okay, don't forget to label your sensors. Uh, I'm gonna label this one. This is my EC5, it's going right here. And our GS3 is over here. And if you have all the same sensor, it's good to label what depths you have them at, uh, which sensor you would like to go into port one or port two. Um, the more organization you have at this point, the better off you'll be in the long run. And we like to protect our cables where they come out of the ground. Rodents are one of the biggest, biggest problems in field installations. Um, the cables do have a uh, rodent chewing deterrent, but uh, it only goes so far. So uh, the best in installations protect their cables, um, either burying cables or protecting them in some type of conduit like PVC or, uh, or electrical conduit or something just to keep the rodents away from them. And generally, generally we found if you can protect them at least 18 inches above the ground, you'll be in good shape. Okay, and we're just gonna twist tie our PVC pipe here to hold it in place so that it can protect our cables. And note I've got it going straight to my GS3 over here, straight to my EC5 over here. That way if I do need to dig these up, I can find the sensors quickly. And then we'll continue with our backfill. Okay, and then we're gonna replace our sod. Make sure that you give yourself enough room so that there's not too much tension to going to the logger itself. This is our GS3, we're gonna put it right into port two. And our EC5 is gonna go into port one. And then last but not least, we definitely wanna check the logger and the sensors at the site. Um, that should be the last thing you do before you leave the site is to double check that your logger is configured and your sensors are both functioning in the soil. Okay, uh, these are just some tips to help you install sensors. It's by no means uh, the only way to do it. Um, feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. You can call the Decagon support line at 509-332-5600 or shoot us an email at support at decagon.com. Thanks.